Thanks for coming back, you guys. We're just going to jump right back in with the gray wolf. I've got two case studies to tell you about. I would jot these down and then maybe leave a space and you can and summarize them in your own words when, when you're done. But the first story takes place in Wisconsin and it's about deer overpopulation. And then the second story is going to take place in Yellowstone National Park. And so here we are in Wisconsin, uh, which is, uh, if you remember, the place that John Muir and his family immigrated to from Scotland. And they, like so many other people that really didn't know what they were doing, uh, saw all the trees growing there and the biomass from that. And they, they uh, just assumed that if the trees grow so well, the, the corn and the wheat and the potatoes and the carrots are all going to grow well too. And so they spent a lot of time uh, and a lot of labor trying to remove the trees and their crazy root systems from their fields so they could grow crops. Little did they know they should just head west and hit Nebraska or Kansas and get into the, the prairie lands. Uh, and that's going to be a lot more suitable for farming. And so today what we've got is we've got all these abandoned farms in Wisconsin. Uh, and so this is a picture of an abandoned farm. And you can see a little forest there. And what happens is you've got secondary succession. And it says secondary succession is when there's a disturbance. Um, but the soil's still there and uh, things can start to grow back and you've got pioneers coming in. It starts with the grass and then the shrubs come in and the trees come in and it's just a, it's just a part of the way it works. And so that's happening, which is all fine and good, but what it's created is prime deer habitat because those trees, that those young trees that come up, they're called saplings, uh, are what the deer like to eat. They're called deer browsers and so elk and moose are the same way. They like eating these young trees. And so uh, what's the, the other thing to note, though, is that Wisconsin, like pretty much everywhere else in the United States, has gotten rid of their top predators. And so the mountain lions are essentially gone. There's a couple, like literally a couple, that have come back, but they're, they're gone. Wolves are totally, uh, totally gone. Um, and so you've, you don't have any top predators anymore. And so what's happened is the deer are going crazy. They're having a heyday. And we all love deer, and they're definitely beautiful animals. But when you've got you know everything in moderation, right? So we've got to have a balance. And so the deer come in. They, they you know it's the summertime is when the living's easy, but wintertime not so much. And so we've got all these problems in Wisconsin related to the deer population explosion, and it's continuing to explode. And so what happens is you get these deer coming in. They eat up all the trees, and then uh, wintertime hits, and it gets cold, and it snows, and now there's no food around. Um, and so the deer come looking for food, and where do they go? They're going into people's yards. Uh, to the point where it's getting aggressive, people actually get mauled by deer, which means the deer are making contact with people, which is never a good thing. Keep them wild. Uh, you've got deer entering towns and cities and going through garbage cans and that kind of thing, causing lots of damage there. Uh, li they literally cause millions and millions of dollars of damage a year, and, and as well as human deaths. I don't know if you've ever seen uh, a, somebody hit a deer. If you hit a deer going 70 miles per hour, which people do all the time, you're going to know it. It's like it's a major accident. And so uh, what this has done is just to relate it back to our rule of 10, which means only 10% of the energy is passed up. Uh, we, we don't have these top predators. And so now we've got this section right here uh, is getting bigger. Right, so the deer are making this uh, primary consumer section bigger, and it's putting way more pressure on this producer section, and then that just throws everything out of whack for the entire ecosystem, and so it's just majorly out of balance, and so uh, it's a problem. It's a huge problem. It's an expensive problem, and if you go to Wisconsin, you're not gonna. It's gonna be hard to find people that are against uh, hunting. Maybe in Madison, where I went to college. Uh, we've got some some bleeding liberals, uh, but we, for the most part, people. I mean, really, the most humane thing you can do is we've got to cull that herd. Is what we're what it's called is like reduce that deer population um, because those animals aren't healthy. That's the other piece of it. Is like as the population gets bigger, there's they're more prone to disease, and so it's not a good thing. Um, and so that's case study number one. So it's an argument for keeping those natural predators uh, intact. Uh, going to case study number two. This is really what we want to see, right, is the wolf. And so here's a pack of wolves taking down an elk. And of course, when you see this kind of thing on planet Earth, at least for me, I'm always rooting for the, the thing that's getting chased. But, but th this is really how it's supposed to work. And so what ha what's happened, uh, in 1995, they reintroduced the wolf, uh, the white or the gray wolf, into Yellowstone National Park after it had been eradicated. Uh, you know, I, I've heard stories uh, about just how people use it for good times. They go out in the back of their pick 
pickup trucks and shoot coyotes and wolves back in the day. And so the wolves uh, had gone, were extirpated. They weren't completely extinct for, on, a, on a global level, but they were completely uh, gone from the lower 48 states for a long time until uh, 1995. Uh, and so what was happening is we didn't have the wolf. And so it was the same thing that was happening in Wisconsin, but now it's for elk. And so there's so many elk in Yellowstone National Park that the winter time would hit and they'd actually herd the elk down here. This isn't Yellowstone, this is just south of Yellowstone, which is uh, it's in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. These are the Grand Tetons, which are might be the most beautiful range of mountains in the United States. Uh, if you ask me, you gotta go check them out. But look at all these elk. So they bring in the elk, because they're, again, they're like, they're beautiful animals and nobody wants to see them just die. And so they feed the elk in the winter time, but they know that this is not a good system, right? These are not healthy elk. And so back in 1995, very controversial, uh, still, they reintroduced uh, wolves, just 14 of them. Hugely controversial. 14 wolves that they had uh, pulled from different packs up in Canada. They introduced them into Yellowstone. And uh, they knew what the wolves would do. They would take down that elk uh, population, uh, but they didn't know the extent of it. And so if you remember, a keystone species is a species that uh, has a just a, a kind of like a ripple effect on the ecosystem and so wolves have proven that they are that and here's why so here's a picture uh, in Yellowstone National Park so the wolves come in and they they immediately call the herd there's so many elk that they just have a heyday uh, they take down the elk and so the elk are they, they like this is a riparian ecosystem remember the wetlands right by a, a creek or a river so the elk are, are eating way too many trees, right? Because there's so many of them. And so once the wolves started to, to take down that elk population, the trees start to come back around the, these uh, riparian zones and the trees shade the water. So then what happens is the water, now that the, the water's being shaded, the water temperature drops. And so the water's colder. Colder water can hold more dissolved oxygen. Uh, and so what happened is it changed the water quality, and so now more fish are coming into uh, the scene, and so you got more trout happening in these creeks, and then the trout attract the birds, and so you got more raptors like falcons and hawks and eagles coming in to feed on these guys, uh, and so... Uh, and then beyond that, now that the, uh, the elk aren't going crazy on the trees, there's more trees. And so the, this is a little beaver dam here. And so the beavers come in and now they start working the trees and build their dams. And that transforms the ecosystem too. And so it all started with just bringing back that wolf. And it just had this ripple effect uh, th through the ecosystem where it just had a lot, lot, lot of unintended or unforeseen positive consequences for bringing that thing back into check. And so now there's over a thousand wolves and there's something like 130 packs. They've spread into Idaho, they've spread other places, and of course the ranchers are on the other side saying that the wolves are like killing sheep and livestock, which is partially true, but for the most part that uh, hasn't been to the extent that people thought it was going to happen. And so uh, it's ended up being a, just a really cool story of how do you, uh, you know, it's related to the Endangered Species Act too of 1973, and so how do you restore an ecosystem? And so this was really a success story and they're looking at doing things like that in other places too so hopefully that was interesting to you i always say that um, but i also would like you to uh, summarize your notes there and i always say that too we'll see you next time thanks for being with me